Hello all and uh, welcome to the next uh, video on this uh, question discussion series for MCM prelims exam. Let's get straight to the questions. Question number uh, 41 is about on what grounds uh, judges of Supreme Court and High Court can be impeached. Now this is a part of the Indian polity and uh, impeachment process is there described and if you have read the basics of polity, uh, if you have read article 124 uh, subsection 4, then you will know that both of the options are correct and in both cases uh, this can be done. So that is why uh, this Indian polity as I have uh, always advocated that Indian polity, Indian economy, these are things where you can expect uh, direct factual questions based on certain articles and knowledge and it will save your time also. So please do this uh, Indian polity and economy in detail for on all kind of objective exams. Now moving on to uh, question 42 which is about the federal system. Now federal system uh, you must uh, understand that there can be either unitary system uh, where there is one central government and where uh, the central government is controlling everything. There is no devolution of power uh, into the units of that uh, system. In our case, um, in, in a federal system, there will be uh, basically, uh, of course, uh, states will be there and the state governments will be there and the power of the central government will be um, given also uh, it will be devol devolution of power will be there decentralization of power will be there so that is what is called a federal uh, setup now our constitution there are certain features uh, unitary features are, are, are also there and there are federal features are also there so it's a mixed kind of a, uh, quasi federal kind of a system you can say where mostly uh, of course the features uh, giving devolution of power is more uh, but there are features uh, of unitary kind of setup also so both of kind of features are there in this case of course the first option is definitely true there has to be the distribution of power and second also it has to be written otherwise uh, how will it be en en enforced basically so in um, simple context uh, both of these are correct and answer will be C now moving on to the next question, 43, it's about flamingos. Everyone has seen that picture of a flamingo and uh, then we know that sometimes, more, uh, many times actually we see them standing on one feet. Now option A is here uh, correct where it is mentioning about saving energy and saving heat and the other option which is about the courtship display. So if you just Google or uh, in YouTube also you can search it and uh, the courtship display is not just about uh, it is a much more detailed process involving head movement of the flamingos involving the wings and all that so it's a much more elaborate process so two will not be correct so here also one only one will be correct question number 44 is about the phenomena of trade winds uh, this is also a very important uh, part of uh, geography and uh, we must uh, read about uh, various uh, trade winds and the uh, zones and from where these winds are the, usually the uh, common phenomena of uh, blowing winds uh, from this low pressure area to high pressure area so in this case clearly it's uh, because of the convection uh, of uh, heat uh, because of heat uh, let's suppose there is an area where there is uh, enough sunlight is coming so during the day the uh, earth will warm up and the air just above the earth will get heated and then it will expand creating a low pressure area so winds from other places air from other places will move towards it so this all basically uh, the trade winds will be caused and this is essentially because of convection of heat now next uh, question number 45 is about the industrial revolution in england when we read world history uh, and uh, in general the um, uh, events across the world also this industrial revolution, uh, the French revolution, all, all these are very important time periods and uh, we should uh, also read about what it led to and what led to it and what it led to and what were the scenarios uh, after and uh, before these kind of events. So when the industrial revolution happened in England, uh, the option number one definitely 
the cottage industry which was there that was replaced with machines and all that like any uh, any industrial revolution and uh, because now machines were used so there was there was surplus of food and uh, therefore there was a lot of population growth across uh, britain which was see, seen during the industrial revolution so second is also correct and uh, when these new kind of things come up uh, new factories earlier so many people were not working together they were working in small cottage industries home industries um, small scale industries but when this industrial revolution happened so many of them came together they formed trade unions and since now new uh, these factory work conditions were very different from uh, the home conditions so they were uh, made to work for long hours and there were other regulations etc so to to resist that obviously organically these uh, trade unions uh, must have uh, evolved so uh, these movement working class movement also evolved so all three are correct in uh, this case question number 46 is about the characteristics of commercial grain farming now if you have seen uh, uh, the uh, comparison of the way farming is done in the first world and third world where third world it's uh, on a very small plots of land and manually essentially but if you see in the first world how farming is done very small portion of people are involved in farming and the area corresponding area are huge as compared to the third world so what uh, in these commercial uh, grain uh, farming in these uh, middle latitude grasslands what you can see is these uh, big lands huge lands and huge lands can only be covered with mechanical uh, basically using machines mechanical farming so the entire process is basically mechanized and of course there is a type of extensive uh, farming because a lot of things are involved a lot of crops are also involved so all these things so in this case also all three are correct so answer will be c next uh, question number 47 is a very direct question uh, in fact this is a very important uh, literary piece of work neel darpan a play by uh, deen bandhu mitra and uh, it is relevant because the event associated with it is uh, very relevant the indigo revolution it is uh, indigo rebellion of bengal it's very very important in our um, uh, modern history and uh, you should read about it what led to it and there were a lot of repercussions of this uh, basically uh, indigo rebellion so neel darpan is a famous uh, literary work which again brings us to the point uh, where uh, we will say that or uh, these important books and literary works are very very important who was the author and what was the subject matter this also at times becomes very very important now question number 48 is a common sense question and if you have read the basics of uh, disaster management actually you don't need the basics of disaster management uh, so if a man is trapped in inside a room and uh, since there is no mention that uh, he has burn injuries so we'll assume that he was secluded in some place but of course since the house was closed so he must have inhaled all the gases and all the you know toxic uh, substances floating in the air which will result in respiratory burn so in this case the answer should be uh, c uh, with the assumption that uh, of course he is not having any burn burns so 48 answer will be c uh, next question is a direct question c uh, of uh, modern history of various events which are there and you have to arrange it in the order of occurrence now this is a very factual question you say ki, okay now you say that the exams are becoming conceptual but you know once in a while you see all these questions and uh, the dates uh, at least the year of uh, occurrence of all these events are very very important in the sense that uh, in other questions also you for a correct logical understanding you know that you have to know the sequence of events which have happened that is why this is very important so answer here will be 3 i am not going into the details please google it last question for this video uh, number 50 in a democracy individual differences are encouraged because see i mean this is again a very common sensical question uh, if you uh, have read the basics of polity and if you have common sense then you should see that uh, the option a uh, individuals will place the good of the nation ahead of their own preferences now this is not always true uh, of course uh, there are um, different kinds of personalities so this assumption 
can be uh, cannot be taken that everyone will uh, you know do like this now b option will tend to act and think alike in the long run so this is also not true everyone is different every thought process is different every one's uh, living conditions and uh, the um, you know how they uh, in what environment they are living that is also very different so all these things is impossible that everyone will act alike and so C makes a lot of sense uh, and that is the whole point of democracy to have diverse uh, opinions and then to have a greatly confluence of all these uh, a constructive confluence basically of all the differences so that is the beauty of democracy that every voice has to be heard and then collectively we must decide what is the path that benefits everyone that takes us forward and that addresses all the issues raised by all the uh, all the people of a democracy so that is the beauty of a democracy so answer here will be c on that note uh, we have completed the this video discussion of 10 questions uh, before we end uh, i would also like to uh, mention a special mention for my mother who has been uh, helping me she asked me how should she could uh, help in uh, you know all this exercise so I asked her if she could type and uh, she has been typing the questions, uh, what you see on the background. Uh, so it is for your benefit actually that we retype these and we uh, basically you know make it more clear and legible. So a uh, big thank you to my mother for doing that and she continues to help out on several initiatives. Uh, so I'm very proud of her and uh, big thank you to her once again. So uh, that was that and we have completed uh, 50 questions now and uh, hopefully uh, as, as soon as I get time I'll try to finish all the 100 questions. Hope your preparations is going fine. Uh, I think the next exam is around the corner and uh, read well, read the basics well, focus on Indian polity, economy and uh, general science and stuff like that to clear the prelims so that you can appear in the main. So thank you uh, for watching, like, subscribe, share, thank you.